So today we're having beef plate ribs and garlic mashed potatoes. Look at this. Oh, you're gonna just love this. Oh, All right, so what we have here, we have a three bone, that three bone, well, you can't see. See, we have three bones, one, two, and three. Three bone beef plate rib. It's delicious. I mean, it's a bit pricey, but I think it's worth it. And while the uh, smoker is getting ready, we're going to put a little Worcestershire sauce on it to act as a binder. I removed most of the silver skin and sinew off of it. Uh, because you, I mean, you really don't want to. I mean, the sinew is going to, you know, cook down, but the the um, silver skin, you got to get get that off if you can. All right, and now to this, we're going to add some kosher salt, coarse salt. It's a lot of meat, so you can take it. Then we're going to add some pepper. Now be generous with it. Like I said, it's a big cut of meat. It'll take it. And now, at this point, you could stop. I mean, this is really all you need. But what I'm going to add is some granulated onion. Yeah, get that flavor on there. Then we're going to add some granulated garlic. Alright. That should pull a nice bark on it. Is that on there good? Now we're going to let this come up to room temperature and get nice and happy. All right, let's hit these sides with these seasonings. A little salt. Pepper. Garlic, granulated garlic. Yeah, you can't forget these sides, man. And you don't have to go as heavy as you do on the top, but um, you want to put something on it. It's a little bit of something. You don't have to worry about the bottom, because on these these plate ribs, there's really no meat on the bottom, it's just bone. You know. So to, to season that part, it's kind of a waste, really. But to each their own. And no, I'm not taking the membrane off. Because with these beef plate ribs, if you take the membrane off and you cook it properly, well, it's going to fall apart on you because there's nothing to hold it together. So unlike pork ribs, you need that membrane on it to keep your, your meat together. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, that's all you want. Keep your stuff together so you can enjoy it. You know, because we was mo we were moving this all around, we're just gonna touch up the top just a tad bit. Don't go crazy with it, because it's been sitting here, so it's getting all nice and tacky, nice and happy, happy. So this one add a little bit. The coals are almost ready. Now we just need for the smoker to come up the tent. And we're gonna shoot for about, you know, 275, 300. I mean, you can go down as low as 225, but I'm looking for a, you know, five and a half to six hour cook. 
depending on how I wrap it. And, and we'll touch base on that here later. All right, let's get this on. Reels ready. Put the meteor side closer to the firebox. And we are good to go. We'll check it in a couple hours. Well, actually, about an hour we'll check it because I want to spritz it. All right. Let's get this shut down. All right, so it's been about an hour. So we're going to spritz it with water and the Worcestershire sauce. Moist. Have to build that crust. There we go. Close that down. So you know it's time to get another spritz. Okay, it's starting to pull off the dome here. Get in there. Now we're going to add some more cherry wood. Now I'm using a blend of cherry wood and hickory. Just a little bit of hickory, I don't want to buy hickory. Definitely cherry wood. Now there's a big debate whether to wrap or not to wrap. And if you do wrap, what do you wrap it in? Do you wrap it in, you know, ceram wrap or aluminum foil? Some people use butcher paper like I'm doing right now. Um, all of them are pretty good except I wouldn't go for the ceram wrap. You're just risking melting the plastic going to your food. And butcher paper is nice because you don't lose your bark. Put this back on the smoker and we're gonna let this stay on here for two hours. So, you right, so now it's time to work on the potatoes. I've washed the potatoes already. We're using uh, red potatoes. And we're just gonna chop them up, make sure they're about the same size here for our mashed potatoes. We're gonna quarter them and then chop them up in like sizes so they cook evenly. We're leaving the skin on. Leaving the skin on because it looks pretty and there's a lot of nutritional value in the skin. You know, don't knock it till you try it. And there. Yeah. Try and give me problems. I'm not gonna let it. And then. All right. I'm all chopped up. And we're going to boil these for about 35 minutes or until they're tender um, for our mashed potatoes. And we're doing a garlic mashed potato, just so you know, a garlic mashed potato. Okay. 
the camera messing with me right now. So I'm not sure how much of this is recording properly, how much is playing games. This potato trying to play games too. Got a few more to cut. And we're going to be using a, a double boiler method to keep the potatoes nice and warm, nice and hot at dinner time. And you, you'll see that as well. So as you say, just hang on to your butts and you'll see it. Now when you're making mashed potatoes, you know I normally use heavy cream. I don't have none today. So I'm just going to be using milk, whole milk, which is fine. It just won't have the fat content that cream has. No worries. Okay. I almost took my finger off just then. I need to slow down. But I'm not. I got things to do. Last one. See, it doesn't take long to cut the potatoes if you have the right equipment. Okay. Now we're going to add water to this and put it on All the right. stove. So now we're going to add some salt to the water. And make sure you season your water. Salt and turn the fire on. Put the lid on it. When this comes to a boil, now we're gonna let it boil for about 15-20 minutes and we're we'll gonna check it for 10 minutes. minutes. And now we're gonna to toast our garlic for our garlic potatoes, mashed potatoes. Add some olive oil. Probably about a half a cup of olive oil. Seems like a lot, but it's not. Trust me. And then we're going to add about three or four tablespoons of garlic, minced garlic. Okay. Now that oil heats up, we're going to toast the garlic. going to infuse with the olive oil because we're going to be adding some of the olive oil to the, potato, the mashed potatoes. Oh yeah. Get that nice and infused. Get mixed up, get it nice and toasted. You don't want to burn it. You just want to toast it, give it a little bit of color, and then turn it off. And you want to cook this because nobody wants to eat raw garlic in their potatoes. You toast it, it gives it a nice, subtle, sweet garlic taste. And then once the garlic is nice 
toasty, light brownish color. You turn off heat. That's what we want. Now let's turn this heat off. And let that sit. Now we wait for the right, potatoes. So the potatoes should be about ready now. It's been about 20 minutes of boiling. Let's get these drained off. All right. Get drained. And then once it's drained, we're gonna put it back in the pan, or back in the pot, actually. And then the magic Okay, so happen. the potatoes have been drained. Now we're gonna mash them. And remember the skins are on these, so it's gonna have a nice little rustic look to it. And that's what we want, so that's fine. Mash it in. This is just a, the preliminary mash. Just to get it started, it'll get smooth here pretty pretty soon. But there's a method to my madness, so just bear with me. All nice and mixed up, all mashed. We're just trying to break up. Basically, we're breaking up the skin, really. The potatoes are gonna be fine. But we want the skin to be really broken up. Okay. Now we're going to add the butter right, and the milk. Just before we add the butter and the milk, remember that we had the garlic that we toasted. So let's grab some of that, put that in there. The olive oil. You don't have to add all the garlic at first, you know, because you want to taste it, see if it's good or not. You know, now let's press that in. Like I said, there is, in fact, a method to my madness. So we're mashing that all in. And I have some garlic butter here. Well, not garlic butter, some herb butter. And I'm gonna add some herb butter to it. Get that in there. And the herb butter has parsley, it has thyme, it has rosemary. You know, all the good stuff. Um, and it's gonna make this taste so much better. So let's get this all mixed in. That mashed in. Now, if you don't have herb butter, you can just add, you know, just a stick of your standard butter. That'd be fine. You just want it to be real buttery and flavorful. That's what it comes down to. And you notice I'm still mashing. Every time I add something new, I'm mashing. And that's going to help out. A little mash, mash with a twist. It's going to help out. Okay. okay, now we're gonna add our milk. Add about a half a cup of milk. Maybe three quarters of a cup of milk. And we're gonna mash again. Mash and stir, mash and stir. Yeah, get the milk incorporated good. The butter's melting. Or by now, actually, the butter should be melted. But if not, keep working it, keep working it. Okay, let me get a whisk you and know, I'll be right back. To be transparent, I was going to go with the whisk, but I decided to use a spatula. Because I can mix it a lot better with the spatula than I can with a whisk. Milk, that's a tad bit more. 
You know, don't be afraid to add the milk. Uncle Charles buying. Let's mix it in. Be careful, don't want to splash yourself. And right now, I have another pot on the stove with just water in it. Just heating up because I'm going to put this pot on top of that one to act as a double boiler to keep this warm. And if you do that, you can keep your potatoes warm for literally for hours doing that. Okay, let me grab a spoon to get a taste. See what we have here. Let me taste. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now, what I would do at this point is add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Right? Let's add a little pepper. Pepper at this point never hurts. Okay. A couple grains of salt. This is coarse salt. Let's mix this up. And we'll get it ready for the double boiler. Mm -hmm. Look how creamy that is. Yes. And that's what we want. Okay, we're gonna put the lid on this and get it on the double boil. Now back to the steak or the beef uh, plate. All right, so it's done. Let's get some cuts. Okay. Ring, nice and juicy. Oh yeah, gonna be delicious. Oh, I can't wait. Right, so we have our garlic mashed potatoes. Take this little end piece here. That, yeah, add that right onto the plate. Oh yeah, hefty little burger. Woo! 